Welcome to Corralling the Chaos podcast, where we talk publicly about the things you're worried about privately. My name is Angela Lea, and I'm your host. This is the event industry podcast for companies and crew, where we're going to dive deep into things like, what does our industry need that it just doesn't have? What are the things you want to know, but you're just too afraid to ask? And what are the biggest opportunities ahead for our industry? We're going to go deep and nothing is off limits. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Corralling the Chaos. I am your guest host today, Jess Cook, and I am head of content here at Lasso. And Angela is actually here with us today, uh, but she is our guest on the show. And we're we're really excited to have you on the other side today, Angela. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We have Angela here today because what we really are looking to talk about um, is a, kind of a vision, a new vision for the very near future of live events and event production. And so, you know, I have a handful of questions here. We're going to kind of dig deep into uh, what's in the future. Like what, what, what's ahead of us? Um, it, it's really exciting. I think we're kind of on the other side of uh, a very historic period of time for live events and um, we're like raring to go. So want to talk about that with you today. Great. Well, you're right. I think our whole industry, we are rearing to go, especially after what we've been through. I think there's a lot of great things on the horizon. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> well, at first, I want to give some folks some some context, some background. I would love to know how you got into the live events industry. Yeah, absolutely. Um, first of all, I never saw it coming. Um, I didn't set out and say, hey, you know, I've always wanted to be in the live events industry, um, but it just kind of happened. So my background, I've always been in kind of revenue producing roles. Um, prior to Lasso, I spent about a decade in workforce management technology. And at the time, one of my clients um, was Clay Sifford, and he was the founder and owner of a midsize production company in Nashville. And you know, just the more I got to kind of know him, his business, learned about the industry. Um, it was a really interesting time when things were really beginning to change for our industry. Um, you know, no one at the time was W2ing because, of course, our industry, we've always done it this way, right? Everyone's always freelanced. Um, and then, you know, with different regulations coming out, you know, there were some compliance things on the horizon and he was just kind of explaining to me their workflow and how they do shows and how they crew them. And it was really fascinating to me. Um, I really didn't believe that an entire industry operated that way. You know, I've typically been a consumer of these amazing events and concerts and NFL games. And, you know, we just kind of take for granted that they just kind of happen, really not having any idea as a consumer all that goes into these things. And when he started to, to share with me how these events are really produced and executed and all of the manual processes, it really kind of blew my mind. He's like, no, 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 it's not just my company. The whole industry operates that way. And I'm like, there's no way an entire industry operates this way and is able to pull off these epic experiences. And um, sure enough, that it, it was true. And so, uh, he had a vision to to solve it for the industry and to give them good tools. And um, I've been fortunate enough to be along for the ride. And uh, so that's that's how I got started in live events. That's amazing. What, what do you think, like looking back at that point in time when you first really met Clay up until now, what has changed in the industry? Have we gotten a, any less manual? Yes, we have. Um, a absolutely. There's a lot that's different. I think people are more open to doing things differently. I think um, people are beginning to think less commodity, more value. You know, 10 years ago, people were all about the gear, the gear, the gear, and the people were kind of an afterthought. Um, I think people refer to uh, the great people who make things happen more as talent, less as labor right? People place a different emphasis on the great people in the industry. And I think people are forced to look for better ways to doing things because our industry is just continuing to grow and you can't scale and grow with manual processes. So I think people um, are, are eager 
um, to look for ways to improve. So yeah, I think we've, we've, we've changed a lot in the last 10 years in a lot of great ways. That's great. Reassuring for sure. Yes. I I know a lot of loyal listeners will probably know that you are very passionate um, about compliance. And I just want to talk a little bit about like, why is that? What makes that so kind of personally important for you? Yeah. I mean, and and look, I'm agnostic when it comes, I you know, whatever these companies want to do, that's their decision. But what I have learned is you can't outrun, you can't outsmart, you can't outfinagle compliance. It does catch up with you, right? You either pay for it now or you pay for it later. And I think at the end of the day, doing what's right by people is important, right? And I think doing things the wrong way can have some significant penalties, financial penalties, uh, reputation penalties, right? Your brand could could suffer by not doing things the right way or, or cutting corners. And that's not just 1099 versus W-2. That could be safety initiatives, cutting corners, right? It's just it's just doing what's right. And so I guess I have a heart for that, number one, because I know it's not changing. And number two, I think, you know, sometimes you got to do the hard things to, to get to a better place. And I think when it makes the lives of the people who make these great experiences happen, when it makes their lives better, I just think it's a good thing. And the reality is it's not going away. So it's like the sooner we figure out how to run our businesses in a more compliant manner, the better off we're going to be and the better we can compete. And so um, that's why, just because I know it's not going away. Yeah. So you might as well embrace it. We don't have to like it. I mean, no one likes it, right? No one's like, hey, yeah, let's go do this just because we want to, you know, it's just, it's just not going to go away. So we might as well just kind of get on board with it. Get on the the right way to do it. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So you're, you're, you and Clay partners were, were bringing this like great software to the industry, solving problems for them. Um, tell me a little bit about what that means to you. Like, what does it mean to be able to bring these kinds of solutions, these, these products and these features and, and knowing what you know about the industry and how it's grown and changed? Like, what does that mean to you to be able to do that? Yeah. I mean, to me, it's not about the features, the benefits. It looks great. It's it's about the impact. How does it change lives? It increases the value of your business if you are doing things more efficiently. If you have things in place that allow you to capture more business at a higher profit margin, recruit great talent to represent you and your brand at show site, those are all things that add value to your business. And in the meantime, it also changes lives. It changes the lives of the people that are working for you, with you, around you, your clients, giving everybody a better experience, which let's face it, that's what everybody in live events is about. They're about the show, the experience, the the magical performance, how it makes people feel. That's why people pour their lives into this industry. And so as much as we want to do that for the audience We have to do that for our people, for our employees, the ones who are making these experiences happen. And so it's not about, you know, bringing great features and things like that. It's the impact that that has on these businesses and the people who pour their lives into those businesses every day, too. Yeah, that's great. I'm going to read you some some statistics from uh, a recent survey we did, and then I just kind of want to hear your reaction to them. Um, So this is all, um, you know, kind of information that we've learned from our customers um, and talking to them and and working with them pretty closely. So uh, event production companies at the moment uh, are using on average um, 2.8 tools to manage their projects. One in four of them are using four or more tools. 40% of them are still managing their projects in spreadsheets and 60% of event Production companies said multiple sources of truth was their top project management, event management problem. So I know we talked a little bit about like the industry has come so far in 10 years. We're not doing all these manual things anymore. But even with the advent of like software that's meant to help, there's still some pretty um, some pretty big issues. So I just want to kind of hear your thoughts on on those those uh, that data there. Yeah, the the first three that you read to me that the word that resonates with me is that's painful, right? That's a lot of places to go 
to do a job and it should not be that complicated. That, that should not be. Our industry needs something that speaks their speak, is a hub to do all of their work, is simple, allows for collaboration and communication. So to me, that's painful. That fourth one that that you read, um, having multiple sources of truth, like to me, I think panic. Like if I'm if <laughs> I'm working on a show and I don't know if I'm operating with the right information, to me that's scary, right? Because there's a thousand different places where a mishap could happen. And many times the audience doesn't know it, but you know it, right? If you're on site, you know when that mishap happens. And so to me, that's kind of, God, just, I don't know, brings out a little bit of anxiety, not knowing, am I working with the right information? Is this the source of truth? So painful and, and scary are, I guess, the words that kind of resonate with me and unnecessary. It shouldn't be like that. Yeah. What do you think is, how, how can we, how can we fix that? How can we change that? Not settle. I mean, obviously lasso, right? We, we. We aspire to continue to bring great things to the industry, but there are so many creative people in the industry, and, and it's amazing when we get to, to sit down with some of these companies and understand all the workarounds that they've created. It, it's pretty incredible, you know, and just their commitment to getting it right despite all those obstacles is big. So I think that's part of it, right? It's like, hey, at the end of the day, I don't care how difficult this is going to be our experience that we give to our customers is not going to suffer. I don't care if we have to work out of four tools. If that's what it takes, we're going to do it. It's expensive to do it and it's not ideal, but at the end of the day, we're going to have a successful outcome. Um, but I think we, we should not settle. You know, we've got to keep at it as an industry to, um, to just continue to bring good tools to the industry so they can, it makes their jobs easier. Okay. I have kind of two, two questions for you next, kind of flip side of a coin, both of them. Uh, if live event companies could embrace one thing this year to improve their business, what in your mind would that be? Evolution. Um, we're evolving. We're doing so quickly. Um, you know, very quickly, there's the haves and the have nots, those that are doing and running versus those that are waiting. You know, I think about leaders and followers. Um, so I think embracing change, leadership, um, the pursuit of excellent, you know, don't, don't wait for things to happen. Go make them happen. Go. If you see a better way, you, you want to build a better mousetrap, go do it. Right. Our industry needs more of that. We need more thought, letter, thought leadership and um, more pioneers to help us to continue to evolve. Cause I think we've got so much ahead of us. And so evolution is what comes to my mind. On the flip side of that, if there was one thing that would hold a company back this year, what might that be? Not being prepared. And I think it's so easy to be tactical and in the weeds. You know, there's a lot of shows happening and execution, execution, execution. But how do we leapfrog that and get ahead of it, especially with resources being so scarce, whether it's gear, people, whatever it is? Um, and, and how do we get strategic and thinking ahead of those things to prepare so when an influx happens, you don't have to say no. And don't get me wrong. I mean, I do think it's important to say no to some things, but what's painful is when you have to say no to that perfect piece of business that you've been pursuing because you just simply can't do it. You don't have the process. You don't have the resources in place to be able to say yes at scale. So I think not being prepared, not thinking ahead, not putting those things in place before you need them, I think that can hold us back. Looking, looking ahead, maybe this year, even beyond, um, the, the event industry is re really complex, tons of moves, moving pieces, tons of people, um, tons of planning and, uh, dependencies and like things that can go wrong at the exact moment that you really do not want it to go wrong. How, how do we fix that? How, how do we find ways to uncomplicate the things that are unnecessarily complicated in, in this line of work? Well, my dream is for our industry to just standardize some things. Things become complicated when there is no standard. There is no expectation, no normalcy, no standard things across companies, which is really hard when our industry is full of freelancers who work for multiple companies. I mean, it's 
really frustrating for them. I work for company A, they use these tools. This is what they call their positions. This is how they pay me. I go to company B, I've got to learn a completely different workflow, completely different tools. I'm paid differently. They're calling my position something different or they're calling it the same thing, but they have a different level of expectation. That's just not necessary. That's just overcomplicating um, things. So I think just standardizing even what we call things, position names, um, how we pay people varies greatly. One of Lasso's most uh, downloaded piece of content is our pay rate survey. And many of you have reached out this year to say, hey, where is it? We didn't do it because the data, there is nothing standard about it across positions, across geography, across touring versus corporate versus festival. I mean, it's all over the place. And so that's to be expected, right? With all the the turmoil and things that have happened um, over the last couple of years. Good news is we're seeing that start to stabilize. So you will be, you, we are going to be sending that out again. But, you know, even just, you know, how companies are classifying people, um, not having a good recruitment strategy for our industry. So those are things that I think we just, we just need to get focused and all get on the same page. Um, and I think that that will just help minimize a lot of the complexities and confusion that happens, especially with all the new people coming into our industry, right? We want to make it easy for them. We don't want to have a lot of friction. And so I think the more we can simplify um, those things, I think it'll be helpful. You you touched on this a bit earlier, uh, and I think this is kind of related to, you know, this kind of idea of standardization. But part of that is how, changing how we talk about this industry, right? Like, we don't really do a very good job of like how how we um, name things, how we talk about things. Like, I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on that a bit. Maybe that's part of standard standardization. Maybe it's something bigger. You mean as far as how we talk about things? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think in, in a lot of ways, we kind of talk around a lot of the same things, but we never really land on this is how it is in our industry. I mean, I think there's I don't think our industry has done a good job of, um, well, let me, let me rephrase that. We've done too good of a job staying behind the curtain. And I think it's time we start to inform, educate, brag on what we do, how we do it. I mean, our industry is the only industry that doesn't even have our own SIC code, which is how you're um, categorized as a business for insurances, for revenue, for all sorts of data that's out there. Um, which is a whole other thing. There is no data on our industry. We don't have a lot of investment dollars. We've just done a really good job staying under the radar and behind the curtain. And I think for our industry to continue to evolve and to continue to progress, we got to we gotta tell people, hey, even consumers, investors, the markets, everybody, here's what's actually happening behind the curtain. It was interesting. I was trying to we're bringing on a ton of people at Lasso, and many are from within the industry, and then some are not. And so I'm trying to figure out, like, how do we best educate these people on the industry? And so I'm looking feverishly online on YouTube, like, surely somebody has done a documentary, a video, something on all that happens. I cannot find a single one. If any of you know of it, please let me know. But that's crazy. With with all the content out there, there's not a single video that teaches people from outside the industry how cool our industry is and what goes into a production. I mean, that talk about an opportunity. I mean, there, there's so many different ways that we could educate. So I think that's just, um, it's a really big opportunity for us. Absolutely. I know, um, you know, some of my kind of experience in the past was um, doing kind of the creative end of, of live events. And, and when I actually got to go like on site and see, you know, oh, my idea coming to life and how many people that takes and how much time that takes and all yeah. of the, you know, just planning and everything around it is, is mind boggling. Um, and, and so it really surprises me. Yeah. That there's just nothing out there that you can kind of see that, um, that world. Right. Yeah. Um, that's fascinating. Maybe we need, maybe that's on us. Maybe we need to create that documentary. Maybe so. Maybe <laughs> so. Any customers out there or companies that want to help us with that, we would love to uh, partner with you on that. Absolutely. That would be amazing. Yeah. It's a great recruitment tool too, right? We want to, we want to start to, you know, educate people that are coming out of college or people that are looking for a different path. Like what better way to do that than to tell a story through, through that. So I think, I just think it's a good opportunity for us. 
there, there seems to be, I mean, besides just kind of a lack of like uh, um, line of sight into what this industry does and what we're all about, kind of a lack of like data as well. Like you said, like the, the, the pay rate data is all over the board and, and it's very, very hard to find a good focused single point of truth for that information. How can we address this? Like, how can we help companies have better data so they can make better business decisions so they know how to move forward? Yeah, well, I think um, I think there's a lot of small nuances in our industry, right? So touring is very different than corporate events. Corporate events are very different than festivals, right? So what is true in touring is not true in corporate events, right? So, But that's okay. But at least if we start with that, right? What does standardization in touring mean? What does standardization in corporate events mean? What does standardization in theater mean? So I think even just kind of starting there, because I think that does lead to a lot of the fragmentation that exists. Um, and then the other thing is, I don't think there's a lot of, uh, or there really isn't a community that really pulls everyone together to kind of share those things as well and kind of talk the same speak. I will say, however, I love the peer groups that are done well, like the folks over at EPM. I think that group, it's full of pioneers, smart, strategic business owners, and that group has full transparency and trust with one another, which, you know, I think our industry, we kind of hold things close to the vest and I would love to see us just kind of open that up, not be so skeptical. Um, because we're going to have to work together to kind of create this community and these standard ways of, of operating and standard ways of talking and communicating and paying and all of that. So I think just kind of building some of those communities within our industry could also be really helpful. 100%. I have one last question for you, and this is something you always like to ask your guests. So I wanted to ask you, what is it that you hope for for this industry? There's a lot that I hope for. There's a lot that I've hoped for 10 years ago that have already kind of come to fruition. And so, um, but if I had to narrow it down, I would say I hope our industry does more evangelizing, um, showing people like brag, don't be behind the curtain, evangelize more, educate more, inform more on what goes into it. And then beyond that, work hard to simplify things. Um, it doesn't have to be that hard. And I think that we all just have to commit to, I mean, some things should be complicated and they are just by nature of what everyone does. And that is always going to be true. But let's be intentional about simplifying the things that we ever complicate, you know, and that takes all of us doing that together. And I think out of that standardization will kind of come as a result of that. So that's that's what I hope for our industry. And I'm already seeing a lot of that. So that's um, exciting to me. Well, thank you, Angela, so much. Thank you for uh, letting me kind of turn the tables uh, today. That was really, really fun. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Corralling the Chaos. Uh, if you enjoyed this conversation, um, please subscribe, follow along. Um, if you have any questions, we are here to answer them. You can reach out to us at podcast at lasso.io and we will be there.